Speaking of uh, on the metrics front, it's, this isn't a currency issue, but I wonder why, um, maybe John or Mike, you guys can jump in on this. Why is it, is it so hard to get, it seems like for, for, for web video series or, 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 or lesser web, or mid-tier mid -tier web, web video networks, channels, whatever you want to call it, um, to, to get an, any, a real idea of what's, what's going on audience-wise is very difficult. Like, I never see a, um, a top 10 web shows report and you know, maybe, maybe you don't buy that way, but that's, that sort of helps elevate the medium in people's eyes. For us, it's, it really comes down to, and it, 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 for us and our competitors, it comes down to basically being a sample size issue. Is that the, because, um, be, because it ta those top web shows are actually have a very small audience size, typically, even relative, you know, even relative to each other. Um, even it, stuff on Hulu or Yahoo or huge? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, if you compare it to, you know, a panel of, you know, they three or four hundred thousand people. Because obviously they're really big audiences. Well, I mean, they, big audience is relative. Right. Right. I mean, you, you know, you can say you can say you have a really big audience, and a really big audience is a half a million people. Uh, that's not that's not a really big audience for from a buying perspective, and that's not a really big audience from a um, uh, from sort of a general audience perspective. You know, I, I, at least from, from my perspective, as it pertains to web original video, a lot of what we do, because I also oversee sales for our web original studio at CBS, and we'll do, you know, three to five of those, uh, maybe more a year. And, um, you know, mostly what we see is we see direct relationships with advertisers, and it's more about, um, you know, certainly audience is important, but it's about an entire experience. It's, it's how that, um, it's, it's not only about, um, you know, the video component, but the interaction um, on the website, the interaction on mobile, um, you know, how many likes we got on Facebook, you know, things like that. So it's more of a um, 360 degree experience from an interactive perspective than just, you know, how many uniques did I get on my video. D but does anybody watch that stuff? I mean, are, are you absolutely, guys, yeah. absolutely. How come? We, how come it seems like we don't hear about it? Or is, is that a Nielsen problem? Is that a CBS wants to keep it close to the vest? Or? No, I, I mean, look, we, we've had we've had a number of hits, and and we've won a, you know a ton of awards for our, our web original content. So I, I I'm not sure. Um, I, I think people that are are interested in the space um, know about it. Um, I, I I'm not sure that that everybody in this room may know about it, but I, I know that people that have interest in you know web original or derivative content um, you know certainly understand the successes and the metrics involved in that that type of an initiative. Kevin, what's going on with, with originals on Hulu? Quite a bit. Uh, we've made a pretty big investment over the last year of starting up something we call Hulu Presents. Uh, it's a docket of different types of uh, original programming that comes through to Hulu, whether it's what we kind of call found and finance stuff from studios like Paramount or Warner Brothers or Sony. Uh, we had a show by the name of the LXD, uh, which was directed by John Chu. Um, you know, it was a top five show for a number of weeks throughout the summer. Uh, eclipsing you know a lot of the the new programming and obviously a lot of the the library programming that was in uh, that was in our um, in our mass head and, and that we were promoting so you have to be careful about when you're you know when you're airing these programs you know you, you don't want to go up against primetime network television originals uh, that are airing currently um, but you also put a fair amount of promotion behind them uh, which we do, and we have a pretty powerful vehicle in order to do that. You know, recommendation engines, different types of uh, different types of promotion that we uh, offer throughout the site. But um, you know, we've been very successful. We have a a show that's a web original uh, called The Morning After, which is uh, a recap of last night's television, and obviously hits very well uh, with <coughs> our audience as they come on to uh, figure out what they want to watch. So we curate a lot of the shows from the previous night's TV. And uh, you know it, it's been successful across the board, and we have quite a few in the development queue moving forward. So you know we're we're pretty happy with what we've done so far. But I think you <coughs> really have to focus on the quality of the content, the quality of the you know the folks who produce it, direct it, the actors. Um, great example is the confession that we aired in the spring. Uh, Kiefer Sutherland, uh, you know, written, produced, directed, starred. Uh, really good stuff. So we've uh, we've picked uh, we we pick and choose very very carefully, uh, but they've proven successful across the board. How, how many people watch the confession? Uh, we don't disclose the numbers, uh, but you know again the confession was a top ten show for the entire time it was airing. So you can think about and that's during the spring. So John, it was going you, up against. Can you guys current. tell me who how many how many people watch that? We could tell you how many time uh, we could tell you we could give you an estimate of how many people watch it. But I think the the thing that here's one of the issues right is that. 
there's, a, there's something around the number of people that are watching it. There's also something around the number of streams. There's also something about the amount of inventory that was actually put into market by it. And I think that that's part of it, is that a lot, a lot of the, the video clients that we're dealing with right now, in the end, they're, because they're not selling programs in a lot of cases, they're selling, they're selling audience hunks. Right, and so, uh, and I think I believe that's the way Hulu sells. Right, is that you guys sell audience, you don't sell programs. Yeah, we uh, can't sell programs. Right, <laughs> um, and so you know, I, I think that one of the one of the ways that we've been trying to look at this for a lot of the video publishers is not necessarily how is, um, not necessarily how is one specific original program doing, but how is a campaign delivering that's being brought across multiple audiences, and is that delivering at scale that the that the advertiser or the agency wants it to be. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the one place where you know, as I said, we don't we don't sell programs from our major content providers. Um, we sell more on a on an audience basis or a genre basis. The original programs we actually do sell specifically because we we obviously have contracted rights in order to do that. Um, but we you know we do have lots of different pieces that are inside of those deals that exist well beyond just the streams themselves. So you know I think the advertisers that we've had on board have been extremely happy and have come back for renewals on Hulu Presents uh, moving forward. So you know I think it's still a very new space. It's one that we're experimenting with. But uh, we, f we feel there's a tremendous amount of promise. We just, you know, again, kind of going back to it, we just started airing a, a show called A Day in the Life that's uh, produced and directed by Morgan Spurlock. And so, you know, they go through and, and talk to celebrities <coughs> or, or people you know and just look at their day in their life. And uh, it's, it's very, very popular. Um, and you can check that out on Hulu and, and you can see it in the rancor of what, uh, of what shows aired last night, this week, last month, and, and it's there. Uh, all right, forgive me, guys, but isn't that isn't it, isn't there a problem when you can't when you guys can't tell me how big the audiences are for you, for original web web? Video? I mean, Dave, if someone if you call up CBS, and said, you know how many people are watching CSI, and they're like, well, I really can't disclose that. I'm sorry, but it's really doing well. Trust me. What, well, what, what would you what would you take on that? Take that. I mean, I, I think the I, I think part of the issue that uh, you know or the challenge for us is that at least for us, they're all they're all sponsored. These things are all sponsored by an advertiser. So. It's, it's difficult for us unless you know, we're working with an advertiser and a press release goes out to, to you know, define exactly what that looks like. But, I, but again, I think I go back to, and, and Kevin sort of echoed this, I go back to the reason that at least advertisers um, work with us, and we have, we have something live right now called Around the World for Free that's on uh, CBS.com and distributed throughout the CBS audience network. Um, it's also distributed on mobile. There's also a huge online component. And so we're, we're, we're not only looking at exactly, it, it's not just about how many video views we're getting, it's about, you know, um, again, Facebook likes. It's about how many Twitter followers, you know, the host has at this point. It's, it's about all of those things. So it's, it's a much deeper, deeper relationship with the advertiser and the content than just, you know, how many people are looking at it. And some of that's contractual, Mike, right? You know, yeah. the disclosure of, the, of those numbers, you know, if you're a production company or you're a star, uh, you know, some of the things that, that we report back to advertisers, the folks that sponsored it, we wouldn't report to the public. It, it's just a little bit different at the yeah. moment, but I do foresee a time when you'll get the equivalent of overnights on any type of All program. right, I get that. Then, then, John, why can't you guys fill that void? That, you, you don't have contracts with that. With, you know. No, we, and again, I mean, if the program is large enough, we, we can report on the program level, and we, our, you know, our goal is to do that. It's just really that the, the, the size of the programs that we're talking about, even if they're you know, relatively successful programs for these specific platforms are still pretty small when it comes to the total audience that they're delivering. And so, and so because that, it does, it puts us in a place where we don't have, we more or less don't have the research sample to be able to deliver those, those metrics. Now, again, the request that's come back to us most often from publishers has not been necessarily to report out their specific programs. Uh, their request has really been to be able to report out campaign measurement and to be able to understand both the delivery of the campaign and the effectiveness of the campaign. And it really hasn't been how you know one specific program itself is delivering because that's not the way it's presently being bought in a lot of cases. So, so all right. So I, I'm the only one that cares about what, what the biggest shows in the web are. I mean, that that just seems hard for me to believe. I, I mean. I mean, from a buyer standpoint, um, there's no doubt there are niche fits for an advertiser in a show that can exist in kind of relatively um, small um, existence for, for, for that show and that advertiser. That might work extremely well for that advertiser. But if we're talking about moving significant amounts of TV dollars to web, um, you need that kind of breakout hit. You need some um, something to draw 
advertisers there, advertising dollars there until the measurement gets there and the volume gets there, the volume in terms of, of views get there, um, you're not going to see a, ma a significant shift of, of dollars, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, data services have, in any market, traditionally driven liquidity into that market, but we're talking about, despite the rapid growth in online video, still a pretty small market right now, both from an overall viewership perspective, also from an overall spend perspective, especially when you, you compare it against other types of media. The, the, the amount of people watching it online video isn't small. Um, relative to some other types of media, media, it's st still burgeoning. I, I mean, I, you know, you can ask Ken over here. I th I'd say the number one thing he wishes he had is more inventory. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, and, and Dave, you said this. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, um, I, uh, you're absolutely correct. I mean, I wish I had more of it. Um, and, and look, we've grown 30% year over year in terms of um, number of people uh, watching our, our content, but it's still, it's still not big enough. 